Freshwater puffers are fun fish to keep, but also very challenging. In this guide, we'll look at the six species of true freshwater puffers found in Africa. Realistically, only two of the six are commonly imported, so don't be surprised if you have trouble finding some of these fish. Compared to Africa, the New World is quite poor in freshwater puffers with just two species in the Amazon, while Asia is the hotspot for puffer diversity with many species and several different genera. Please note that our maps are approximates to show you where the fish come from and don't give an exact outline of the range for each species, but let's plot all the African puffers on a map. In Africa, the puffer hotspot is the Congo River, but the most widespread species is the Fahaka puffer. They are found in the entire Nile and Niger Basin, from the headwaters in eastern Guinea, across all of West Africa, down to the mouth of the river in Nigeria. There are also some remnant population in lakes in North and East Africa. In the Congo, puffers occur right in the main sector of the river. The Congo is famous for its rapids, but much of the river is slower flowing, with muddy substrates ideal for clams and snails. In the Malabo Pool, the widest sector of the river near the capitals of Kinshasa and Brazzaville, is where most of the giant puffers, Tetrodon Bu, are collected. But this species is widespread in the Congo and even occurs in Lake Tanganyika. The borrowing puffer is a bit more adapted to the stronger water flow. This species is found throughout much of the Congo River Basin, but rarely in high numbers. Their color is the most variable, ranging from dark brown to orange and even oxblood red. Upstream of the Malebo Pool, closer to the city of Kisangani, is where the two other species are found. The first is the African Dwarf Puffer. Because this species is not collected anywhere near the capital, where most of our aquarium fish come from, it was absent from the hobby from the 1980s until we imported the first specimens in 2012. Since then, it has become available again on a regular basis. The most rare African puffer is Tetrona in Duboisi. It is apparently restricted to the upper tributaries of the Congo, but never exported in large number. At most a dozen specimens are exported each year. Closely related to the Fahaka is the red spotted puffer. This species has a very restricted range and occurs only in sections of the Cross River, the border river between Nigeria and Cameroon. Because the Cross River is part of the Niger Basin, it also occurs together with the Fahaka puffer in some parts of the river. African puffers and their other relatives, even in salt water, all like the same foods. I feed a mix of shrimp, mussels, snails, pieces of fish and earthworms. Note that it does not much matter if the shellfish is fed with shells on or not. Most puffers can easily bite through a black mussel shell. It is actually better for the puffers if they have to crack open their food themselves to give them some behavioral enrichment and wear down their continuously growing teeth. The Fahaka puffer is a difficult aquarium fish. For one, they get very large, 45 centimeters or 18 inches, but they are also very aggressive and therefore extremely difficult to keep with other fish and especially each other. That requires some careful planning and compatible individuals. Fahaka puffers are now bred commercially in Asia, but were also bred by aquarists in Russia more than 25 years ago. Realistically, it is best to keep this fish on its own. I have only seen one Fahaka successfully housed in an aquarium with very large cichlids and disticodas. There is a certain intelligence to puffers, perhaps because of their large eyes and ability to react and follow a finger or person outside the aquarium. The opaline iridescence of their eyes is very beautiful, but be aware that these fish have an incredibly strong bite. Adults could bite through the bone of your finger. The Malebo Pool is a very wide sector of the Congo, where the flow of the river slows down and sandy islands covered in reeds create shallow beaches that are home to snails and clams, especially on their lee side, where thick mud is the preferred substrate for a number of clam species. Mbu puffers are common here but do not breed in this sector of the river. Mbu breed somewhere upstream, and small fingertip-sized mbu migrate downstream by the thousands in the early months of the year. This species is less aggressive than both the Fahaka and Postulatus, but it is also the largest species. Adult mbu can reach lengths of 60 centimeters or 24 inches. A quick note here about making your fish puff up. It is a natural way for the puffers to avoid getting eaten by predators, but it puts tremendous strain on their bodies, especially when they are filled with air. Puffers should always be transferred in water and scooped from the net with a cup to avoid undue stress on the fish. Mbu is a less aggressive fish than its size would suggest, and many individuals do just fine in community aquariums, even with smaller fish. Other than the Shutedeni puffer, 
This is the least predatory species and reasonably well suited for the community aquarium with fast moving tank mates. In more than 35 years of business, I've seen less than a handful of aberrant puffers. The patterns of each tetraoda and boo seems to be different, but as adults they look quite similar. This rare individual has a more broken up, uniform pattern of round spots, rather than the random pattern of worm lines and oblong spots shown by most of them. This fish has already reached a good size and is likely to keep this unusual pattern as an adult. Like all fish in the family Tetrodontidae, the liver and gonads of freshwater puffers are deadly poisonous, but large puffers also have an incredibly powerful bite, strong enough to crack open oysters, be aware that pets and kids should not have access to the puffer aquarium. I hope you're enjoying our puffer guide. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and share this video with friends. If you want to further support the channel, come buy a book on the Rio Shingu at belowwater.com. Tetrodon murus is found in faster moving water, where they spend most of their time buried in the substrate with just the mouth and eyes protruding from the sand. This species hunts by biting the stomach of other fish swimming above, and despite their adult size of around 20 centimeters or 8 inches, it is accordingly difficult to keep this species with other fish in the aquarium. Likely the brighter colored, orange or red fish are the smaller males, and the less colorful larger fish are females. Any attempt to keep these fish in a group should involve very strong water flow, plenty of space and plenty of food, because they frequently attack one another. Like all puffers, these attacks leave dark outlined oval bruises on the fish, but these bites can also be fatal if the victim's eyes or skin is torn by the attacker. Tetraodon shutideni is the smallest species, growing to around 10 centimeters or 4 inches. They are moderately aggressive towards each other and mostly ignore tank mates and plants. This species is perhaps the most well suited as an aquarium fish. Hobby breeders in Germany and Asia have also bred this species in the aquarium. Smaller puffers like Tetraodon shutideni or many of the other small Asian Carino Tetraodon species are very good at eliminating snail infestations in a planted aquarium. This group, the first to be exported from the Congo in over 25 years, spent several months living with Teleogramma brichardi, Phenacogrammus and small Disticotus species in an aquarium of 240 liters or 60 US gallons. If you are unable to provide snails, these puffers readily accept bloodworm, earthworm and even carnivore pellet food. Their favorite remains fresh live mussels that are better off served on the half shell for this small puffer that may not be able to bite through the shell otherwise. Snails on the other hand, even the hard shelled Malaysian live bearing snails are opened up without any effort. The most rare African puffer is Tetrodon duboisi. It is a beautiful fish that resembles Tetrodon murus but does not habitually bury in the substrate. Instead, it swims in midwater. It is a very predatory species that will chase down and kill other fish in the aquarium. But I found that Dubois puffer does well with fast moving fish such as Gara and Labio, as well as cryptic bottom dwelling Stertocranus. Their adult size seems to be near 25 centimeters or 10 inches. But given their aggression, this species needs plenty of space, and any attempt of keeping these puffers together in the same aquarium will be extremely challenging. Sadly, this species is either very rare in nature, or their preferred habitat is unknown, and so this attractive and interesting fish is very rarely exported. Tetrodon postulatus had also disappeared from the hobby for many years, but it has now become more common again. It is closely related to the Fahaka puffer, but more beautifully patterned and somewhat smaller, with an adult size of around 30 centimeters or 12 inches. On a trip to the Cross River in the early 2000s, I was able to find Postulatus puffers in the clear, shallow water of the Cross River. The puffers easily navigate the strong water flow, blowing water into the substrate to expose snails and clams that are quickly torn open and eaten. Individuals are spaced well apart, and any meeting is met with aggression until one animal is chased out of the territory. The Cross River is relatively shallow in the dry season, and the puffers are caught with large nets over the boulder and gravel substrate. Likely, males have a more beautiful pattern of red spots than females. I hope you enjoyed our puffer guide. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and share this video with friends. If you want to further support the channel, come buy a book on the Rio Shingu at belowwater.com.